Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about how to customize Esri base maps using an application called the Vector Tile Style Editor. And I'm really excited to show you this tool today because it's changed the way that I approach my map projects. Um, I see it as this giant library of customizable base data now. And vector tiles, they're really fast and performant, so they're great for web visualizations. Um, how many people in here have used this tool? Okay, so a good number. Um, I also want to mention that the technical steps that I'm going to show today, I have in a blog and a video, so don't feel like you need to take all these notes because I'm going to go pretty fast. So. so my name is Emily Merriam, and I am a senior GIS engineer at Esri, and here are 12 maps that I used base maps customized with the vector tile style editor. Um, I use it for both, both desktop and online maps, and so it's really diverse what you can do with it. And this application is where you can customize many of Esri's core base maps into anything you want, whether it's a full redesign or if you just want to change one or two features or colors on the map. And you can access it surprisingly in a number of places. I use number two most often. I'll go to Google, I'll, t I'll type in vector tile style editor, launch the application there, or you can access it directly from the tile layers content page. And so today we're gonna learn how to make general edits with this tool. Then we're gonna do something I've been doing a lot lately, which is taking pieces from one base map and then putting it into another through code editing. And lastly, exciting, you can edit labels now. I'm really excited to show you that. So today we're gonna make a base map that uses world imagery, but we're gonna reduce it just so it's a contextual layer. We're also gonna highlight the forested areas and customize those labels to make this map here. I love blending base maps together. This is actually six different Esri base maps customized in the style editor and then integrated using the blend modes in the map viewer. And it's this blend of digital and reality where you can get that context of the imagery, but it's subdued enough for you to add other content on top of it and it won't compete. So I'm gonna now introduce you to the tool. I'm gonna to play a demo of how to use, uh, to make this map. We're gonna be highlighting the Tulare Lake area in California that reappeared this year after the significant rainfall of last season. So that. Okay, I've just Googled Vector Tile Style Editor. I'm gonna launch the application here. Sign in. Oh. Where's IT? <laughs> let me see here. Here, let me take it. Let me do this. Let me try to take it out of. Let me exit the slideshow. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I fixed it. Um, okay, so we're in Vector Tile Style Editor. You can see I've edited lots of these, so we'll go ahead and click New Style. Let's take a look at the topographic map. All right, here it comes in. And I'll start here at the top. This is the quick edit section. This is where you can make blanket changes to your entire base map. Let's say you wanted to change all of the water features on your map, you can do it right here. Keep in mind there's a cascading effect, so if you change something here in the quick editor, it's gonna take it all the way down to the street level, so you don't have as much control here. This is new, as of this year, we have the ability to change the language of the entire base map. So we support a number of different languages and you can change all the languages on the map by just clicking here. Likewise for fonts, you can change all the fonts on your map or make them larger or smaller. Likewise for roads, narrower or wider. And this is very handy when you're making quick edits. This is where I spend most of my time is in the uh, edit layer styles and you can dig in and get all the details of all the different features on this map or you can click on the map and it'll bring up the corresponding window and you can do your styling there. You can also edit by color so you can pick one of these colors here on the map and all of the layers that have that color within it you can change all the colors in one fell swoop. You can also upload your own icons and pattern fills. It's really easy to do. You just can create those as PNG files and then upload them here. 
This is also new, and we're going to dig into this in a moment. This is the code editor. So uh, this is new also as of uh, about a year and a half ago. We now have the ability to access the JSON directly from the style editor here. You can also switch the background of your maps or hide the mini maps. So there's a lot here you can do. So let me go ahead and play this video, and I'm going to walk through it. So we're going to be styling this detail layer here. And all I want on this map are roads and rivers. So I'm going to first come in here, and I'm going to turn off some of the polygon fills. We have airports. I'm going to just turn those off by clicking on it. I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to change all the water features on this map to be a lighter gray. And so I can do that easily by just typing in a code here, like that. But because I just want the rivers and the lake, uh, excuse me, the rivers and the roads, I'm going to turn off the marine area. I'm going to turn off the bathymetry, as well as the lakes, because this is going to be sitting on top of my base map. Let's zoom into one of my favorite cities, San Francisco. Take a look here at the roads. I'm going to use the quick editor here, because I don't want to go in and customize all those different roads. I'm just going to lighten these up a little bit for this map, like this. Just type in a lighter gray. There we go. And save this. And so we've got our detail layer created. We'll save this. And we'll move on to our base layer. And so this is going to be sitting on top of our imagery map and blended eventually once we get into the map viewer. So I'll go ahead here, and I'm going to turn on the imagery. Zoom in. I'm going to lighten up just a little bit the land color. Just take the edge off of the white ever so slightly. And just type in a code here. And I'll give it opacity and 30%. So we can see the land underneath. Now we're going to turn on the bathymetry here, because I'm going to be blending this with the imagery. And I want it to be tinted a little bit blue so I can soften the imagery when I eventually get it into my map. All right, let's work on these forested areas. And I love doing this. This is super exciting. I want to make the green Sierra Nevada here. And so I know that in the topographic map, we have a vegetation layer. So I'm going to actually take the vegetation layer for high density and low density. I'm going to take it out of the JSON here. I'm just going to copy that section of code that I need, like this. Copy this out. And then I'm going to bring it back into my other base map. And I'm just going to paste it in here, like this. And then I'll update it. And now we have the forested areas from the topographic map. And now they're inside my version of human geography map. All right. And we're going to add um, a blue or green to these. So I'm going to customize the color a little bit by just darkening it so slightly. And then I'm also going to have the opacity persist throughout the entire map at 15%. So here I'll do the same thing for the low density. I'll make it a little bit darker blue-green. And then I'm also going to give it 15% opacity here. All right, so I've now got two base maps in this one map here. And we'll save this like that. All right, let's work on our reference layer. This is exciting. We can edit those labels now. So let's turn on the hill shade so we can see where we are. I'm going to zoom in to my area of focus. And I'm going to do a quick edit here. I'm going to change all the fonts on the entire map to be a little bit more punchy. I'm going to go Arial Bold for these. Let's bring them out a little bit more. But for all the water features, I want a more classic serif font. So I'm going to give these a serif font of Noto Serif Bold Italic, like that. All right, let's zoom in here. Let's talk about what we're going to do. So we're going to be modifying. 
I just paused it. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> We're going to be modifying this label for Tulare Lake Bed. And the way this works is we first have to remove it from this layer, then we have to bring it back in. And so I'm going to remove it, copy it, bring it back in. So that's the, the process of that. So this Tulare Lake Bed here, which I drove past recently, is still there. All right, I'll select that. We'll go ahead into the JSON file. Let's take a look at what's happening here. So we have this filter function here. And right now, the filter is saying, just present to me the label class. So that's what the code is saying right now. And what we're going to do, I'm going to paste in another version of this code. And I'm adding in an exclamation point here. So I'm saying, I want to see, um, the exclamation point means I do not want to see the Tulare Lake bed. And so the code's going to read it. It's going to keep all the other labels except the Tulare Lake bed. And so it's gone. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to duplicate my layer like that. It now has a slash one. And I'm going to bring back just that one label by removing the exclamation point to be an equal sign. And now I'm saying I only want the Tulare Lake bed. And the label's back, and now I can go in and make my customizations to just that one label. So I'm going to make it bigger, like that. I'm going to change the font to be that Noto Serif Bold Italic to match the other features, like that. I'm going to make it a pretty blue color. So let's change that. And I'm going to give the halo a blue as well. And put some opacity on this, I think 16%. So just a little bit like that. Next, I'm going to make a little bit more room in between the words Tulare and lake bed. So it appears a little nicer. Then I'm going to adjust the text anchor that. And I'm going to, get it, going to give it an offset so it sits more neatly within my polygon, like that. All right, the next thing we can do, which is super exciting, is we can add words to our labels. So I'm going to add the word county to kings. And I can do that by adding the word county to this text field section of the code. So I'll just add the word county, update it, and now it says Kings County. So super exciting. We almost have keys to the whole library now to be able to change these labels. I'm going to just change the brown so my map is black and white, except for the Tulare Lake bed label. Just apply that. And we'll save this like that. And another thing I've been doing lately is publishing my own vector tiles from Pro. So I've got my lake polygon here. I've separated it out so it's a polyline and a polygon because I want to be able to adjust both of those independently. I've published that as a vector tile. I can bring this into the style editor and I can actually make styling changes to my own personal published vector tile. So I've added on this polygon, I've duplicated the outline so I can get more of a feathered and faded look on the edges like that. All right, let's put it all together in our web map. So all I have here is world hillshade and world imagery. And one of the things I like to do is blend in hillshade over imagery. And it just boosts it a little bit, you know, accentuates the terrain a little bit like that. So I've just multiplied that. I'm going to add some transparency to my imagery. Then I'll come over here and add in all the layers that we just created. So I've got my reference layer, my detail, my base, and my vector tile. And we'll just add our last customizations here. Like that, move this up here into our reference section. Add some transparency to that. 30%, just so it sits back a little bit. Move my detail up and add some transparency to that as well so it's not so prominent. And then I'm going to multiply my base layer into my imagery like that. And the last thing to do is modify my lake polygon. And I'll multiply this. 
And there you have it. We've got six different base maps now in one web map and a very elegant way of looking at imagery. All right, and it's all right here. <laughs> I have a video and a blog for this entire map. So thank you very much.